Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Public News Podcast. I'm here with the drones. I got Rev and Andy. Guys coming straight out of Seattle here to play with Miss Olsen. So, uh, how are you guys doing today, man? Uh, we're good, dude. We're, we're good. good. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think you, you, is that your microphone? Are you in this guy? Yeah, he, that's him. Yeah, he doesn't have to move. He can oh, man. Thank you. you got the star treatment. And you got the fancy chair, too. <laughs> man. I oh, know we're good, man. This is like week man, four of this U.S. tour. So we're stoked to be home for a couple days. And then yeah. we go to Europe. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys going to Europe next? Yep. Yeah, so we're home for... We've been out for four weeks. We're home in a couple days. And then we're home for three weeks. And then we uh, go to England to play... Uh, in London with Booze and Glory, our friends, for their 15-year anniversary. Then we play a festival in Germany called Rock and Roll Butter Fart. Nice. And then uh, and then we're home for five days for a drummer's daughter's bat mitzvah. And then we're in Europe for a month. Wow. And, yeah, so just hit the... I mean, that's what we do. Your set's going to go live tonight. You know, oh, awesome. people will see it and they'll watch the podcast come out, like, next week. And, uh... So, you know, tell the people that around here that don't really know much about you guys, whatever, your kind of history, where you came from, and how the band started, and, cool. you know, a little history on it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, this band started shortly after Rev and I used to be in a band called Success, uh, that he started many, many years ago. Um, and as that sort of started to slow down, both of us were looking to stay on the road, and so we just started writing. And uh, turns out that our friend Jake, who was a long-time touring drummer for just tons of bands. But he was looking to get into something new at the same time, and it just kind of worked out perfectly. And uh, kind of just hit the ground running and haven't stopped for six years now. So. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, we, we started this band in a different way from from how any of us had started any other band, in the sense that right out of the gate, we were like, we got to make commitments to the art that we make, yeah. um, which I think would sound weird to a normal band, but we were like, okay, well, when it comes to the music that we write, right, we never stop writing. We always write, we always record. If we're not recording, we're on the road. If we're not on the road, we're writing and recording. And uh, if we're gonna say yes to every single opportunity the band can get. And if someone says no, they're out of the band. And we agreed to all of that at day one. So, and we haven't stopped. And that's why within six years, we're now touring the world and it's our job, you know, to do this. So. Yeah, so, so did, you, did you ever think, you know, when you, you jumped into the punk scene that, you know, it, this would take you all over the world? Not in the slightest. Right? No, absolutely never. <laughs> That's amazing. No, I mean, we, this is what we always wanted to do. But also, it's like, you know, when we were kids and we were both starting out, but Andy and I both are from smaller towns. Uh, and, you know, you never think that. But you do think, man, it'd be really cool if I could write a song. Then you, then you think, it'd be really cool if I could play a show. You know, then you think, it'd be really cool if I could open up for one of my favorite bands. And it just kind of grows from there, you know? Yeah. To now where we're like, man, did you think we could retire one day doing this? You know? Like, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I think it's small victories, you know, when you're first starting out. But uh, now we're very fortunate, especially for only being abandoned for almost seven years now. It's uh, it's crazy how much progress we made so quick. But. Well, yeah, I'm honored that, you know, to have you guys here and, you know, so you guys show your talents here. And you oh, know, thank, thank you. you guys for coming here. That's a cool spot. We really appreciate so, it. We you. absolutely do. Thank you, man. And uh, so, you know, people are going to watch this and listen to music. We're, we're, I mean, I'm sure you guys are all over the place, you know, Spotify, everything. Is it there? Yeah. You got a website or something that they could go to, find tickets, upcoming shows? Where, yeah. where do they go? TheDrownsRock.com. But also, we're on every single streaming platform. Like, I mean, it's that was actually when we started this band. We, our old band, as Andy said a second ago, was called Success, which is completely ungoogleable. Like, you could never find that band because of that word, right? So we uh, called the band The Drowns specifically because it's not a real word, you know? And like, right. So you can find us. Literally Google, and you'll find anywhere online. You'll be fine. Cool. Yeah, Very all cool. websites. Andy's on Pornhub. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the band is on, is on everywhere. Feet finder. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> you might see things on Andy you don't want to see on Pornhub. But like, I mean, you bad. don't want to see Hey, it. I don't know, man. It's not bad. <laughs> well, I know there's some younger kids watching this. Maybe they want to see it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, you know, where, where are you guys uh, in the next couple of weeks? Where are you guys going to be? Uh, so we actually only have a few shows left on this run. We're going to be hitting uh, San Francisco tomorrow with our friends uh, Tess and the Details, and mm -hmm. then we're in uh, Salem and Portland, and then we're home for a few weeks. Yeah. And home in Seattle there. for you guys, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, we, I mean, it's, it's, we've been out for, we live in the whole U.S., so four weeks now, we were just kind of everywhere. We hit every single storm imaginable in the right. last, like, four weeks. Yeah. yeah. And we had, and we were in Corpus Christi, Texas last week, and it was 90 degrees. It was yeah. crazy, dude. 
Yeah, that's why cool. yeah, I've driven cross country about probably nine times since I went to school back in Maryland. Mm. I was back there for 30 years. I just recently came back here, but I always drive cross country, take different routes, and it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, man, it gets nuts. Like yeah, it was yeah. like freezing cold in New York, and then a week later it was like 90 degrees in Texas. Like, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, within a day, we went from 70 degrees to a snowstorm in a matter of hours just right. driving yeah. this thing. Yeah, we were in an ice storm in the beginning of this tour in Oregon. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's crazy, man. Just rock and roll, man. You just got to do what you got to do. Yeah, exactly <laughs> through. So, uh, you know, look, people get, get to know you a little more. I, I like to ask this question, you know. So, you know, what, what made you decide, not just get really into the punk scene, but, but music in general? You know, what, like what made you want to pick up an instrument to sing, write the music? You know, what was it? Was it, was it an artist, a parent? Was You know, what, what's your influence, you know? I don't want to speak for Andy, but I, I would say both of us probably came from a lot of, like, feeling like weirdos. Yeah. And, like, finding that as the way out for us, you know, the one thing that, like, made us feel like we were a part of something. I mean, I think punk rock does that for a lot of people. Right. Um, right. You know, kind of makes someone find their scene amongst misfits, you know. Like, uh, for me, that's what it was. I was in, I was uh, raised in an army family. My family's all from Washington, but I was raised in an army family and, uh, you know. Every couple of years, you have to make new friends, and you, you know, I, I have no longtime friends from when I was a child. I just don't have them because right. we moved all the time. But the one thing that was always constant in my life was rock and roll. It was like always there. I always had the Clash, and I always had the Ramones, and I always had like the records that I love, and that never left. So I think it was a natural progression for a weird little kid to just follow that because it was the only constant in my life. Sure. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I come from a somewhat musical family. Like, my dad played in bands when he was younger. My brother was in a psychobilly band that did a, a bunch of touring when I was in my teens, and so I got to just go with him and watch how shows are, are put together and how, you're, how you book yourself and um, just kind of learn stage etiquette and all that kind of thing, watching him and digging through his record collections. Yeah. Kind of learned about a lot of things, but specifically, like, punk rock. So, yeah, from, like, a the age of eight, I think. I've, I've Shout out to Ben. Pretty deep into this, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Andy's Andy brother, Ben. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, it's funny because I always get a different answer. You know, you, know, yeah. get, you, know, you never know what you're going to hear as part of influence, you know. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and never, like, I've never heard, you know, just being a weird kid. You know, that's, that's <laughs> Honestly, that's, yeah, I mean, I think that's really true. what it was, you know. Like, yeah. you know, so I, when my dad retired from the military, I was in middle school. And so we went back to the small town my family's from, which is really small and very, like, redneck in the mountains. You know, lots of, like, super rednecky folks. And I showed up with green hair and, like, a NASA patch on my jeans. And, like, that was absolutely an outcast amongst this, like, farming community that I had right. moved to. <laughs> totally so. bad, yeah. But, you know, who never, like, shit on me was Joey Ramone. Never, never <laughs> once said anything bad about me, you know. And, like, <laughs> Joe Strummer always told me what I was supposed to do, you know. It's like... There's, there's a, it just seemed like a natural progression. Yeah. I played drums too, and I was shitty at it. And my best friend at the time told me I was shitty at it. And then he was like, but you have to figure out another instrument so that way we can jam. So that's why I learned guitars because I was shitty at drums. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Well, hey, Ben, uh, you know, hey, thank you guys so much for coming here. You yeah. know, I really appreciate it. I can't wait to see you guys play. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I've been listening to you guys online, you know, getting pumped. So yeah. We're doing this whole interview before you've seen us, too. What if we suck? <laughs> what if we no, suck no, ass and you're like, like, damn, scrap that interview, guys. <laughs> scrap that interview. <laughs> well, from what I heard, man, you guys are pretty damn good. So. Uh, no, we have a lot of fun. But he's be so funny if he was like, oh, I see. He was a weird kid now. <laughs> I could tell because he's a weird adult, too. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. There's a lot of weird adults around here, so you're good. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. I just got, that's a true story. The promoter was just out front. I got hugged and kissed by some random old lady I've never seen before in my life on my way in. <laughs> you can ask Ruben. That's what happened. It was weird. If, if, this is the, if the lady watches, I'm really sorry. I just called you old, but you're older than my mom. Uh, <laughs> she grabbed me and kissed me, and she was like, did you hear the fucking drowns were here? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, I'm just kidding. I know you're in the band. <laughs> and she just walked away. Just random smooching. Perfect. Yeah, all right. Part of the rock star life, man. Yeah, I guess, man. <laughs> I guess. Part of what I got to deal with. Uh, no, man, it's going to be fun. We're stoked. We love, I mean, we love this part. Nobody, everybody talks about LA. Nobody talks about, what. what is this? I mean, like, I know it's Ventura and Oxnard yeah, and stuff. Yeah, Oxnard, yeah. But like, what, it, it, like in San Diego, you got like North County. Is that like, what do they call this area? It's like it's not like, the well, valley. This like the Ventura area, you know Okay. I mean? yeah, it's, it's 805. You know we've always had fun up here. Yeah, like, they, you know, there's a huge, huge punk scene around here. It's been here for years. It's yeah, hardcore. Oxnard's got tons of history too. You know, there's a ton of bands that come out of here. So yeah. much talent. And, you know, they. I'm fortunate enough to have them play here quite a bit. You know, all these different bands, and you know, we've really sort of 
I don't want to say taking over the punk scene, but giving really a place for them to play. You know, totally. and so it, you know, a lot of respect for the the, the punk scene and the Nardcore has been you know fabulous to me to this area and. You know, there's just, it's been great. It's been really cool, man. Well, I think it makes perfect sense for a band to hit this on the way in or out of L.A. Just, uh, I mean, granted, it's it's only technically, like, distance-wise an hour away, but with L.A. traffic, it takes, like, three or four hours or whatever. But still, it seems to make perfect sense for a band to stop by here. So I don't know why more bands wouldn't come by and play this. They absolutely yeah. should. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, a cool yeah, venue. We're just getting ourselves on the map. You know, we get a lot of a lot of bands coming here. But, uh, you know, it's been it's been great. The punk scene's the best. You know what I mean? It's absolute best. You know, everybody's always thinking, "Oh, punks!" No, man. There's more respect come from the punk crowd than any any crowds that we have. You know, because oh, yeah. they cherish a place to play. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's never any problems or any hassles, and you know, I, I you know, I love it. I love I've been I listen to punk music my whole life. So, on know, this on this tour, I mean, we do huge festivals and stuff all over the world, right? But on this tour, we did a few shows that were smaller DIY places and like obviously this is not that this is a great venue of a good size uh, but like we played in like speaking of the punk scene we played in Lincoln, Nebraska mm -hmm. at this place called The Swamp that was literally just a room in an office building and we were like we got there we were like what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> Why are we here right now? We loaded into this stinky office building and uh, the bathroom was on another floor next to like a random like office where people are like working and shit and it was one of the greatest shows we had okay. so much fun at that show yeah and that's what's beautiful about the punk rock scene is it's like someone wanted and needed a place to play so someone was like i got a place and someone else made it happen and that's beautiful man yeah it's like so just like you said it's like we, they just punks just want a place to play man yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm glad you guys have facilitated that for us. So thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, you guys, you know, check out the drums online. You know, if you see uh, any shows in your area coming up, go check them out. And also, got people watching in Germany, go to the festival. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> hell yeah. Yeah, that, that's awesome, man. Yeah, congratulations on your success. And uh, I wish you guys all the best and looking forward to seeing you guys play tonight, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate thank it much. Yeah, thank you. All right, we're out, man. Have a good night. Thank you. Ow!